talk about getting mortgages with credit issues okay there's been a lot of changes within the within the market at the moment for people that have had blemishes on their credit uh, profile that could be missed payments late payments default county court judgments and things that are more serious like debt management IVS and so forth so let's talk about that guys Hi, it's Pyam here from Niche Advice. I'm an independent mortgage broker and I've set up this channel to talk about lots of things to do with mortgages. This is an information channel. It's not advice. So let's talk about things. Right. One of the topics that um, we should really be talking about, I've, I've done videos on this in the past, but certainly not uh, recent ones, is people that have had past problems with credit. So this could be a late payment, missed payment. It could be default CCJs and so forth. Right. So what's the stance on this? Well, don't rule out, the first rule is, don't rule out the high street. Just because you've had late payments, just because you've had missed payments, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a high street client, okay? It all then comes into, what, what was it? Was it a mobile phone? Has it been sorted out? Or was it something more serious? Was it a utility bill? Or was it more serious? Was it like, um, you, know, uh, you know, the more serious type really of late payments is, is a mortgage, right so and if it was a mortgage when was it was it a year ago two years ago three years ago four years ago and what's the conduct and how many months was it late right so all of those things can be seen via your credit report i leave a link below uh, to the one that we like check my files simply because it's got all the credit agencies in there and it's clear and i can read it okay and that's one of the biggest problems that we have with credit um, credit reports and also we've got an affiliate link with them so we're actually uh, working with them um right so you've done your credit check, you've seen that there are late payments. Uh, then we talk about, okay, when when it was. So if it's a you know, missed mobile phone payment and it was last year or over six months ago, that doesn't rule you out the high street. So then it, it talks about, we, we look into, is it to do with what's your loan to value? Oh, I want to do a 95% mortgage. Well, if you want to do a 95% mortgage and you've got a number of late payments, the likelihood of you going through the high street is very low, right? 10% deposit depends on what it is. If it's a very small one, if it's a 50 pounds, 60 pounds, then you could look at that, okay? I would say the broker, then it comes down to the broker's expertise. Um, you know, lazy brokers, I find, will just go to the easy option. And the easy option is to go to a non-high street lender that has got a policy on this, right? That will say, look, we'll ignore, I don't know, mobile phone payments missed payments they'll just ignore it however the rate is high um, so I suppose it comes down to the experience of the broker to see look oh yes I've done one with this high street lender and they did accept it so it comes down to how often that broker is dealing with that subject matter and how often they are seeing that deal and this is I suppose the most important point if you're taking away not all brokers are the same not all brokers deal with things there are certain deals that I'm not very good at because I don't write them regularly. Um, and, um, you know, there, there are certain, there's certainly, and I, I'm honest enough to tell those clients, look, it's not one for me because I'm not an expert in there. I would say um, the residential stuff where they're more older clients, I'm not, I'm not an expert of that stuff in terms of, uh, you know, lending into retirement too much and things like that. I'm not big on that later life lending. I don't actually have um, the, the permissions to deal with sort of things like equity release and, you know, later life stuff. I don't delve into it. However, when you're dealing with the adverse stuff, because we deal with it day in, day out, because we get those type of inquiries, we are familiar with the lender's criteria. And not just the written criteria of what can get through the lenders, okay? So it's not just about... Um, uh, specific um, lending criteria it's about reading behind the lines reading behind the systems and going by past experiences so but what I will say is the situation when it comes to adverse cases and things like that, it's got a lot better you can get mortgages if you've had CCJs defaults whether they're paid or whether they're not paid it really comes down to, I think the holy grail is, most common inquiry I get right now is, look, I've had bad credit, I've had default CCJs, can you get me a 10% mortgage? Um, the reality is, is look, 
If it's in the last couple of years, two years or so, it's going to be very difficult to get you a 90% mortgage. There are some solutions out there, but it depends on what it is, right? We have got 90% mortgages with adverse credit, generally over two to three years old. Uh, now, adverse credit, what I mean is default and CCJs. If it's like late payments, then there are solutions out there. Um, but then when you're looking at more serious stuff, you know, uh, you could be in a debt management plan and there are lenders out there that will give you mortgages. So you could be on a run, live running debt management plan and they will give you a mortgage. Again, loan to value is key. Okay, so on those type of deals, it's about the loan to value, how much deposit you put down. Um, bankruptcies over three years, there are lenders out there. Over a year, there are lenders out there. But again, deposit is key. Um, the more... Uh, the further you are from your discharge date, the better the products and the, there's a better the choice. Obviously, after six years, when it's off your file, there's a lot more options out there. The caveat to that is if there's a repossession. If there's a repossession, then you have to stay away from some lenders. And there are some lenders, if you've been bankrupt or been in an IVA, they will never lend to you. It doesn't matter if it was 30 years ago. So that's important. So identifying those lenders and staying away from those lenders because they don't want the business and you don't want to give them that business. Um, there are lots of options in regards to help to buy. So you can, in theory, go with a 5% deposit down mortgage if you're buying a new build and you've got adverse credit. So you could do that. So although I said 95% mortgages, that was a standard mortgage. You could do help to buy. Gets more complicated on the shared ownership and that's probably the least, um, the least best option out there in regards to shared ownership. People that have had credit issues and want to buy shared ownership. There's not much choice out there. And, and the reason for that is people do not want to take a shared risk with someone who's had problems. Okay, so help to buy the government probably does. Government's doing it. But when you're talking about shared ownership, um, there are stricter criteria, and the type of lenders that generally deal with shared ownership um, they are generally the high street. There are a few lenders now have come up, you know, that will do shared ownership with adverse credit, but they're far and few. And I think with shared ownership, affordability is key as well. It's working out the affordability calculations because obviously you're paying or you only own a share and you're paying the rent and then you're responsible for the service charge and you know the various bits and pieces. So shared ownership is about affordability and less choice out there if you've had credit issues, but there are options. So you can buy outright. You can buy help to buy. You can go down the shared ownership route. You can't do the government 95% mortgage, which is basically the one that's come out where it's just a 95% mortgage, not a help to buy. I don't believe you can. I haven't seen any lenders really going to that uh, fold there. I think you might be able to get away with it if the adverse is historical or very minor. Um, there are rules around adverse as well in regards to some lenders or building societies will say, look, it can't be more than a thousand pounds if it's a CCJ. It can't be over the last three years. There are rules to say, look, if you've had a CCJ or a default, it must be satisfied. And there are some lenders that will say, if it's satisfied, it must have been satisfied for the last year or two years or whatever it is. There are lenders that will say, you don't need to satisfy them. There are lenders that say, look, if you're making commitment, if you're making payments towards your defaults and CCJs and so forth, so you've got a non-voluntary, so a voluntary sort of agreement, not a debt management plan, that's fine, will allow you to do so. So say you had a late payment five years ago, four years ago, and you're paying them 20 pounds a month, they'll just take that 20 pounds a month as a loan, right? So, God, this is a, it's a big one, it's a big one. So, what are the rules? Get an independent mortgage broker to look at it. Don't pay huge fees. I've seen huge fees up front for adverse type mortgages. Eye-watering fees up front given to brokers. So. Anyway, I'll speak to you later. If you need something, get in touch with us. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.